everybody, it's me, Sir Actual Slacks here, and I am here with a very special guest, the biggest guest I've ever met in my life, the legend himself, ladies and germs, it's Richard Garfield, man. The creator of everything you've ever loved, typically for some of you. How are you doing today, sir? Good. Uh, ah, so Thanks. good to see you. So uh, for those of you who have lived under a rock for the last hundred years, uh, what do you do, sir? Uh, I design games. Uh, my uh, biggest creation to date was uh, Magic uh, the Gathering. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I designed uh, a, a good artifact. So. <laughs> designed a good chunk of the artifact, the game that a lot of people are coming here to play today. Everybody in line, you have this man to think. Yes, there you go. So a uh, few questions here for you, because a rare opportunity. So why Artifact? I mean, you've made a lot of games before. Uh, what inspired you to make a game like this? What's different about it than everything else? Well, uh, I almost always design games to fill a void in my game experience. Ah. And uh, um, I really enjoyed the electronic card games that had come out, but I felt like they didn't capture the epic quality you sometimes got in paper card games. Mm. And uh, and so I uh, talked to Valve about uh, about that and gave them some ideas for mechanics that you could use to, to do that. And, uh, and uh, three years later, this is where we are. There we go, yeah. It's very interesting as an artifact guy who's been playing for a while, just seeing all the different cards like uh, Red Mist Pillager that can just come out. And I try to imagine playing that on a physical deck would be pretty rough. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the stories I like to tell is uh, that I, I played a particular uh, game online, and then I went and played a game of Magic and ended up with 30 uh, counter creatures in play. And I thought, <laughs> why can't you have, this should be easier on computer, not harder. Sure. So when I talked to Valve, it was like, uh, he was like, I want to have it so there's no upper bound to how many creatures. You can have as many cards in your deck as you like. You can have as many cards in your hand as you like. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. So you've made a lot of games in the past, and uh, Magic, of course, one of them. In your opinion, as a game designer, what makes a good card game? What is the thing that you're looking for that's like, yeah, that's why I'm making it? Uh, I, <clears throat> I like it when things can happen which make you think on your feet, something unexpected. Uh, in uh, massively modular games like uh, Magic or uh, Artifact, I like it uh, when they com the cards combine in unexpected ways. Yeah. One of the uh, uh, most important things for me, though, is, uh, is if I could see your hand, that would change my play. Mm. That feels very interactive to me, where I'm trying to guess what's in your hand. I really uh, am a sucker for games where I know something, and I don't want you to know it. So I try to structure my play to keep that hidden from you. Yeah, that, we see that a lot, especially with the different combinations of the colors and all that. Uh, I lose a lot to people knowing things I don't in this yeah. So thanks a lot for that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, so I did want to ask you about something controversial here. Okay. Uh, when a lot of people come and play Artifact for the first time, the first thing I usually hear is like, oh, what's up with the random arrows? What's up with the random crease placement? Randomness, a lot of people think that it's a big negative thing and uh, I wanted to ask you the god himself of card games what's up with randomness what's your is it good is it bad uh, well it depends how it's handled ah. uh, um, as I, I said with uh, card games one of the things I like most is the unexpected oh. and there's nothing more unexpected than randomness <laughs> uh, if it's done right um, so what you want to do what I like to do is is uh, add randomness to the game in such a way that and, and give people tools to manage that yeah and so there are all sorts of ways to address what happens to you during the game that's random. Uh, you can, for instance, if you don't like where the arrows are going, there are cards which readjust those arrows. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, I'm going to live with the, where the arrows uh, uh, aim, but I'm going to add this other card that's just going to wipe out the enemy. So who cares where the arrows are uh, 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 facing? Um, so an analogy is that, uh, uh, that, that it's like you're fighting a battle on shifting sands, and you, uh, uh, that you know, the, the sands may shift in unexpected ways, but that doesn't mean that you're, uh, that the game's all, you know, all luck or all determined by the sands. Right. It's still the mightiest warrior who's going to uh, carry the day most of the time. That's very, yeah, that's a great point. And I, I feel like that's one of the better times that I feel good playing Artifact, when something doesn't go my way, but I included that uh, card that would make that arrow point the right way, and it's like, I prepared yeah. for that. So feels pretty good, but yeah, that's very interesting. Now, I didn't write this question down, but... Do you care about lore, 
Richard? Is it all gameplay for you? Are you a lore man? Uh, I, I am not a lore man. <laughs> However, uh, uh, the lore of Dota has been very uh, profitable as far as uh, getting good game mechanics. Oh. Like people look at the game and they say, you've got three lanes, you've got uh, 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 these heroes. Uh, Richard, how did it feel being constrained by the lore of Dota? And yeah. I say, you know, Valve told me you have no constraints, do whatever the best game is. Hmm. But, uh, uh, but looking at Dota, it's a rich supply of uh, game concepts and uh, that led to some of the most exciting things in Artifact. Yeah, it sounds like it uh, could have inspired you in a lot of different ways, seeing these different heroes. Absolutely. The, uh, the Three Towers is a really good example. I've been thinking about uh, the fact that in uh, card games, it's really nice to play matches, yeah. two out of three. Uh, and I, I feel disappointed when I play a, a, a game online and then I'm matched with somebody else and I don't get a chance to play the other two games to see if I won just by luck or, or whether I lost but could change my strategy. Um, and so uh, when we began looking at the towers, which is very inspired by Dota, of course, uh, it felt to me like uh, playing uh, three games all at once. Yeah. And, uh, and you get to win two out of three, you're, or you're supposed to win two out of three. And so uh, this carries with it sort of this uh, epic quality that uh, you feel like in one sitting you've played through a match. Hmm. Yeah, I completely feel like that. A lot of people that I know feel that way as well. It's just taken an ancient and then playing that other lane. It's almost like you're playing a different game in every turn, so very cool. Uh, okay, so you don't have to answer this one very personal question here, but out of all the things that you've ever designed, what is your favorite singular card? What is the one that you're like, ah, I'm proud of that boy. I'm happy that he made it. Uh, it. <laughs> well, I, I will uh, answer that for uh, magic, and I will answer that for artifact. Okay, hit um, me. So with Magic, my favorite card, because I think this illustrates where my brain is, uh -huh. um, is uh, Scheherazade. Uh, Scheherazade is, uh, of course, the storyteller from the Arabian Nights mm. who uh, is extending her life by telling a story. And oh. she is motivated to uh, uh, keep the story going. So she wants to, she adds stories within stories, is one of her famous things. And so the card uh, makes it so that you interrupt the game and you start playing a sub game. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I love the sort of a meta quality to that. Uh, and and so that's my favorite magic card. I thought you said you weren't a lore guy. That was absolutely lore. Oh, it was I, I love how game, I love how game mechanics interact with story. Ah, okay. So, so that's a, <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, so, so then in in, uh, in artifact, my yeah. favorite card to date is uh, is uh, enough magic. And <laughs> you can't just meme these people out here. Into <laughs> enough magic is not. So, all right, you, so, you don't have to explain it all. We can keep that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, two more questions for you, and I'll let you out of here. So we've been talking a lot about Magic and other card games. A lot of the audience that we see here so far are Dota fans coming up, and they're very interested. And we're getting uh, other card game fans as well. I'm very uh, knowledgeable on the Dota aspect of joining this game. It's the first card game I've ever played. No offense, I apologize. Uh, but uh, what should guys that play other card games know before heading into Artifact? What's, like, the biggest thing that they got to wrap their heads around? Uh, I, I would say the, the first piece of advice I give to somebody coming to this from other card games is that they can't really think of it as a card game they're used to in, the, in that the complexity of the game, the, the strategic state is much broader than they're used to. Huh. Um, so, so I usually tell them to think of it as like a, a MOBA or a real-time strategy game, uh, but put set on cards. Like a, in a real-time strategy game or a MOBA, you have to keep track of an immense amount of stuff and you've got a lot of time pressure. This uh, does you know, th this is closer to that than it is a, uh, a card game. Mm. All right, very cool. All right, last question. Again, okay. optional, but uh, what is one thing that you designed that never made the cut, but you never forgot? Maybe it was a funny card, maybe it was a way overpower concept. What's one thing that you're like, it's probably good that it's not in there, but you never forgot it? Oh, that's that's one I should have read ahead of time. Oh, no, like, no, I'm okay, sure okay. I'd have a good answer to that. Or, but, uh, uh, yeah, you know, any card that you sticks out in your mind like, oh, man, that was a mistake. We had to fix that card. I'll take that answer, too. 
Uh, no, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> it was like all my all my design was perfect. And, well, uh, of course, never had any uh, of problems. course you have no answer. You're the god among men. <laughs> I've made no mistakes, and everything I've ever wanted is in the game. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Richard is going to be here for a little bit today as well, so maybe you can get some questions on your own. But uh, one more round of applause, the man, the myth, the legend. Coming down. So we hope to see you guys some more at PAX here uh, at our Artifact booth, and we hope you guys are enjoying From Home on stream. Thank you so much. We'll be back with you for some more Artifact action very soon.